velocity motion is relative. Not so for accelerated motion. Let's consider another example, since being in space might throw some of you guys off. Okay, you've decided to go on a long journey to some distant place and thought taking a train would be the best mode of transportation. The train is very dull, and so you fall asleep. Sometime later, you wake up. How can you tell if the train is moving or not? Let's pretend this is an ideal environment and that the train doesn't bump along the tracks. Actually, let's pretend the train is a maglev, nice and smooth. Uh, that's a train that floats on air because of extremely powerful magnets. Also, let's pretend it's a really, really quiet maglev, so you can't hear anything from outside, whether it's the wind rushing by or the train engine. Okay, so now that we've gotten rid of all those annoying snags, how do you tell if you're in motion or not after waking up? Well, most of us would look out the window. But what if, when you're looking out the window, there's another train that was running on adjacent parallel rails blocking your view? As the train's windows flash by, who is in motion? You or the other train? If the windows aren't moving at all, does that mean that you're both at rest? Or are you both moving in the same direction with the same velocity? The answer is, you can't. As long as there isn't any acceleration, you can't discern who is in motion and who is at rest. Let's take this a step further. Let's close the windows. Now what? If there's no acceleration, then there is no experiment you could ever perform that will tell you that you are in motion. You're stuck. You might be moving, but you might not. You will never know. This is the heart of relativity. Motion needs a point of comparison, a frame of reference. This is where Einstein comes in. He realized that the principle of relativity could be applied to all laws of physics. All the laws of physics must be absolutely identical for all observers experiencing constant velocity motion, hence the lack of any experiment that is able to tell you if you are in motion or not. Well, that's relativity. Let's move on to the second ingredient of special relativity, properties of light. This is going to fly in the face of what we've learned about relativity. After nearly a century of experimental work by physicists, it is found that light travels at 670 million miles per hour, regardless of benchmarks for comparison. Let me say this again. Light travels at 670 million miles per hour, regardless of benchmarks for comparisons. No matter what you compare a photon with, it will always move at 670 million miles per hour. If this isn't blowing your mind, Rewind and view the part on relativity. Seriously. Now, okay, I'm gonna leave this bombshell alone for a bit, but we'll come back to it. Don't worry. Let's pretend that it's the year 2075 and aliens have attacked Earth. Hang on, there's a point to this. So we're in space, fighting off this evil alien spaceship swarm. Meh. Let's go to dogfight between two spaceships. Okay, so the human spaceship decides that it's time to launch a missile at the alien opponent. Now, if the missile has a constant velocity of 50 miles an hour, I'm simplifying the numbers. Don't have a cow. And the alien spaceship is running away at 40 miles an hour. Intuition tells us that the missile is approaching the alien ship at 10 miles an hour. Eventually, boom! The alien ship is hit with the missile and it explodes. Yay for the humans. Yes, I'm aware this is the worst spaceship battle in all of science fiction history. The victorious human ship goes off in search of more prey and decides to pick a fight with a very fast alien ship. So fast, actually, that has no problems whatsoever outrunning the human spaceship's 50 mile per hour missiles. The human captain decides that he has had enough and tells his crew to charge up the laser cannon. The human spaceship fires a laser burst at the alien ship, which reacts instantly and flies away from the laser beam at an astounding 650 million miles per hour. Let's recall that the speed of light is 670 million miles per hour. Intuition tells us that the laser beam is approaching the fleeing alien ship at 20 million miles an hour. But recall earlier that light travels at 670 million miles per hour regardless of benchmark. Regardless! In truth, the laser beam is heading towards the soon-to-be-dead alien ship at 670 million miles per hour. Now, some of you out there probably think I'm lying. Or at least I'm very, very deluded. That's the thing about special relativity. It doesn't feel intuitively true. Nothing we can do in everyday life can ever compare to the speed of light. So we don't experience the strange properties of light speed. Well, we can test this idea of regardless of benchmark very simply. Stars. Whee! Scientists have looked at the stars, measured the speed at which their photons are approaching Earth, and every single one of them, without fail, is speeding along at 670 million miles an hour. To our minds, it doesn't make sense. But it's the way the universe works. 
physics cares little about what we think of it. To reiterate, the speed of light is constant. That is the answer to Einstein's question at the very beginning of the episode. What happens if you chase a photon at the speed of light? The photon moves away from you at the speed of light. Therefore, there is no such thing as stationary light. It's time to drive home at a point I've hinted at, but haven't actually come out and said. The point is this. If two events are occurring simultaneously according to one viewpoint, then they are not occurring simultaneously according to another viewpoint that is in relative motion. I'm not even going to try to explain this. Let me demonstrate this concept with yet another example. Let's pretend that there are two nations at war who, with the aid of UN and the Secretary General, have finally managed to agree to a peace treaty. However, the two opposing presidents have very large egos. Another one wants to sign the treaty before the other president does. The solution, of course, is to have them sign the treaty at the same time. However, this is a boring scenario. Let's pretend that the two presidents are on a speeding train. The president of Forwardland is facing the direction in which the train is moving, and the president of Backwardland is facing the opposite direction. So, how do you get the two to sign the peace treaty at the same time? The Secretary General, having a bit of knowledge of physics himself, decides that the best way is to place a light bulb in the middle of the table, equidistant from both presidents. The Secretary General reasons that since light travels at a constant, regardless of the constant velocity of the train, and since it has the same distance to cover, being in the middle of the table, each president will see the light turn on at the exact same time. He gets the two presidents to agree to sign the peace treaty when they see the light turn on, and then, well, fix the light on. The two presidents sign the treaty, shake hands, smile for the camera, and exit the train. Reporters immediately swarm to the president of Forward Lane on the train station and ask him how he feels about being the first to sign the treaty. He is bewildered, of course. He thought he had signed it at the same time as the president of Backward Land. But let's look at the scenario from the point of view of the people on the stationary train station. Let me shrink the train a bit so I can put it in motion. The bulb lights and sends photons speeding down both ends of the table. But the distance, according to the people on the train station, is no longer equal. The president of Forward Land is now closer to the point where the light bulb was, where the photons were released. And the president of Backward Land is further away from the point. So which version of events is correct? Did the light reach both presidents at the same time? Or did the president of Forward Land see the light before the president of Backward Land? The answer is both. Hence what I said before. If two events are occurring simultaneously according to one viewpoint, then they are not occurring simultaneously according to another viewpoint that is in relative motion. This is a very strange conclusion, and one of the most important things to realize about relativity. Viewpoints in different relative motion do not observe the same thing. If this is confusing, we're not alone. I can't think of another way to simplify what that example just demonstrated. Keep watching though, the next part might help you understand the president paradox. So I'm going to talk about the effects of relative motion on time. Now, what is time? Rather than trying to give a linguistic definition, I'm going to define it pragmatically. Time is something that is measured by clocks. Well, that begs the question of, what is a clock? Down to its very essence, a clock is a device that undergoes perfect regular cycles of motion. Time is